Coming up on the program, it is time to harvest our huge onions. And we've got some problems with some soil that we're going to do some things about the easy way. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the following. In MyGardener.com, over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. In MyGardener.com. Sue Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sue's, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull base potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit Sue Growing Supply Dot com. Stop before you dig. Call Diggers Hotline first. Call three business days before you dig. It's the law. It's completely free and it's for your safety. Know what's below before you dig. It's your responsibility. Call Diggers Hotline or visit them at diggershotline.com. HappyLeafLED.com. Commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, no motors. Simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. All indoors. HappyLeafLED.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. Well, today is the day that we have been waiting for for quite some time to harvest our large onions. We've got red ruby onions, we've got white uh, Spanish onions, and some yellow Spanish onions here. Now the story behind these onions, these were all started from seed approximately the second week of January is when we started them. And we started them in the Root Maker one gallon grow bags. We had tried many different techniques of starting onions indoors, which is the recommended procedure in order to grow these. And we just didn't have the success. So we looked at our options and we decided let's go with the one gallon grow bags from Root Maker. We put uh, we did several different variations, but the best that worked out for us was about 50 to 60 seeds in each container. And we planted them, put them under the Happy Leaf LED grow lights, and they have done very well inside. And then we brought them out and we planted them in the square foot garden method, which is between four and nine plants per square foot. We went with nine per square foot and it's worked very, very well. The other thing that we had done differently is we didn't put these in the traditional ground. A lot of the ground garden that we have has done very well, but the onions just did not do well in the ground that we had. So we put them in the Sioux Growing Supply <coughs> uh, potting soil, professional potting soil, and we have here some certified leaf compost from Sioux that we've also grown them in, in our raised bed from Art of the Garden. These have done really well. Now the ones that we'll harvest a little bit later in the 60 gallon grow bags from Root Maker did not do as well as, as these. And there's a very specific reason from our exper ex experience of why that didn't work. And we'll get to that in just a moment. But I wanna harvest these. These are the biggest we've ever grown. These are seeds, uh, the, we started from seed and these were all from migardener.com. Uh, and these are long day onions for us here in the zone 5A here in Wisconsin. Based on where you're at, you may have difficulty growing onions because you have dense soil, or you may be growing the wrong variety of onions. They're short day, long day, and neutral day onions. And you can go to any of your favorite search engines and look at that and find out where you're at in the country and or the world, and that will determine the type of onion that you need to be growing in your area to get big bulbing onions like we have here. If you grow the wrong onion in your area, you may get little to no bulbing, but a lot of green tops. So let's go ahead. We topped these a couple of weeks ago, and we could leave these longer, but we're gonna go ahead and pull all of them out to get this bag cleaned out for another planting of uh, fall vegetables. But we planted these very deep, and because of the loose soil, the, it didn't affect the bulb. If you're in dense soil, like traditional ground in some instances, if you plant them too deep, the soil is going to restrict them and uh, prevent the bulb from getting large enough to develop. With this loose soil, had no issue whatsoever. That was a ruby red. Here is a double ruby red, which I'm not real sure how this happened, but it has split. And you can see the, the general bulb here and then an additional growth right there. 
Now, we didn't have all a wonderful success in this bed. I mean, to some of you, this may be just unbelievably be, uh, great. And to some of you, you may think, well, these are kind of tiny. So everybody has their own level of these are great uh, category. So this is one of the smaller ones. Well, that's not one of the smaller ones. These are some of the smaller ones here. Now, typically, when we had done growing onions in the actual ground garden for us, if we got something like this, we were excited. If we got something like this, we felt we had just accomplished a world record. Uh, so we had to change up because these to us was not going to be worth the effort. This one might. These were, these were more looking like cocktail onions than actual slicing onions. So we, we did what we had to do and did a research and found that this was the best way. I mean, that's, that's farmer market, maybe state fair uh, pretty right there. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest all of these. Here's another really nice ruby red uh, onion there. I'm going to harvest all these. We'll lay them out. We'll take a look at what we got and then we'll go over how we want to cure these so we get the most longevity out of our onion. And then we'll take a look at the onions that we got growing in the Rootmaker 60 gallon grow bag that didn't do very well and I'll explain why they didn't do very well. So we've harvested them all out of the bed and we have a very beautiful selection of onions. And just to give you some comparison, obviously you don't know how large my hand is so that doesn't help you much on video to describe how large it is. This is a traditional coffee cup. Doesn't even fit in the top. Kind of comparison to the side. That's a decent sized onion. Let's go with a larger red one here. That's the double red one. And you can see how big some of these are in comparison to the coffee cup or coffee mug. Even that's a giant white one there. Uh, these are the biggest ones, like I said, we've ever grown. And just with a combination of a lot of things, good seed from MI Gardener, good soil from Sioux Growing Supply, a raised bed from Art of the Garden, and starting them in the one gallon grow bags from Rootmaker, combination of all that allowed us to get what we have today with these. Now, let's talk about curing these onions. Uh, there's a ways that you can cure them. You can leave them in the ground. But before we do that, I want to go and harvest those in the 60 gallon grow bag that didn't do so well. And I'll explain why they didn't do so well. So next year, we know what we did wrong and you won't make the mistake that we made. So this is our 60 gallon grow bag in which we had planted onions. Uh, beside it has got some fall cabbage and then we've got potatoes and bush beans intercropped in the third bag. These onions here, I'll go ahead and harvest, these are mo mainly red ruby onions, the red onions there, and these did not do well at all. We did trim them back uh, about a week ago just to try to get rid of some of the top growth that yet had nothing to do with what has occurred here. What the reason why that bed back in the front yard worked so well and this one didn't was because of the tree that is slightly above us in the uh, bed here that the onions are in. Onions are day length sensitive, which means that at a certain day length of light, then they will begin to stop putting on top growth and begin working on bulb development. The bed out front has full sun, even though the shade of the tree exists here, during the full daylight hours, that bed gets almost 99% of full sun out in the front yard. This bed here, there are per, per, uh, particular hours during the afternoon in which this bed here is shaded completely until the sun moves past the tree as it has at this point during the day. This greatly affects the bulb development and is a key contributor to why we have very underdeveloped onion bulbs here. We will harvest them and utilize them. Now these are the type of size of onion bulbs in which we typically on an average year in the past was very happy to get out of the traditional ground garden. But we'll go ahead and remove all of these and then we'll go ahead and put a fall crop of uh, something in here. But that's the reason why. We won't be growing onions in this particular bed in this particular location again. We will figure out where we can put another bed like this 
and then go ahead and plant onions again, uh, we will revitalize the soil in the front yard bed and we can, will greatly consider growing them again in that area. So I'll harvest these, we'll head back to the front yard and we'll talk about how we're going to cure these to get the best longevity in storage out of our onions. So in order to cure your onions for long term storage, you can do a couple of things. You can leave them out like this in the sun for a couple of days and let them begin to dry out, uh, especially the tops, and then you can trim them back like you would see store-bought onions and trim the roots. But you'd want to make sure the tops are completely dead because some energy does go back into the bulb. If you don't want to do that, you can put them on an air uh, screen, elevated under a shade for a couple of days or uh, an amount of time that it takes for them to dry. Or you can take them inside in a controlled environment, 70 to 80 degrees, lay them out on a table, and allow that to occur as well. Now that may take a longer period of time because you're inside or in a garage or basement or something of that nature. We didn't want to leave them in the ground too long because they can start molding or rotting if uh, the conditions are just right with that. So. Uh, growing onions with the smaller ones, we'll use those for soups and stews. With these, you can certainly use them right away. You don't have to wait for them to cure in order to use them. You can cut them up, use them right now. But the long-term storage or curing of the onion is important if you're going to store them. And there's a bunch of different ways in which you can find online to work for your situation on the best way to store them, uh, essentially out of direct sunlight in a cool, dry place. So. We are very happy with these onions and we'll follow all the steps that we did this year again next year in hopes of the same result. Growing your shrubs, bushes, or trees, you can use a couple of items in which to help prevent animals from gnawing at the actual tree trunk or the, the, the bush uh, trunk. One, you can apply IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard. In addition to that, as a secondary barrier, you can take a piece of PVC pipe. Now, it can be any type of PVC pipe, but you want the diameter to be long, wide enough or big enough. This here is a, I believe, a four inch PVC pipe that we've got. And what we're going to do here, obviously with the shrub being or the bush being too big, I can't put this around. So what we can do is we can notch it and actually slide it on as a secondary level of protection for your plant. So what you'll want to do is put it in a vise. You can also do this freehand but or on a table saw, but this is the way we're going to do it. So we've got one cut there. So I'm going to take uh, uh, the distance that the trunk is and just a little bit more and go ahead and cut the notch out. just like that. And then that will allow me to slide it around the tree or the bush or the shrub and we'll go up in the front yard and I'll show you how this is applied. So here is our cherry bush tree and we have applied Ivy Organic several months ago, 3-in-1 Plant Guard, to the trunk of the tree. Now we do need to reapply it again, but for right now a defense mechanism to prevent animals from chewing on the actual trunk is you can take your PVC pipe and you just kind of fit it in there and nestle it down and it doesn't have to be tight against the trunk. You do want some give here but enough to where the animals can't get sitting on the ground gnaw on that. You can do what it, you can you can make it however big or small you want you just want to make sure it's not snug up against the trunk. So another way to prevent in addition to the IV Organics 3-in-1 plant guard to to uh, keep your animals from gnawing on your fruit bushes and trees. So this is the bed that we harvested our potatoes from about a month ago. The potatoes in this bed were very, very poor compared to the bed that's a couple of feet away. Those potatoes did incredibly well, that soil that's turned up by the Yacons. So what has occurred in this bed, we did potatoes this past year, a couple weeks ago we harvested them, as well as we did about three years ago, and they kind of all did the same thing. Now last year we had tomatoes in this portion of the bed and peppers in that portion of the bed. Worked out really, really well, so we thought, okay, the soil is probably pretty good. We went ahead and planted potatoes this spring, 
and they just did not yield good at all. About one to one and a half, sometimes two potatoes per plant and a half of, of a potato, I'm talking one of them little tiny ones in comparison to a decent sized potato. We have very cloddy soil uh, that really didn't work very well this spring and then it still didn't, you know, as we dug the soil up to harvest the potatoes, it still was very cloddy and chunky here. Uh, so what we're going to do, and we did amend the soil this year, this spring, with certified leaf compost from Sue's. We added coffee grounds in the spring, we added shredded paper in the spring, uh, kind of all worked that together, and it just didn't seem to help. Now sometimes if your soil is extremely depleted, we also used uh, sustained uh, fertilizer too. If your soil is really depleted, it takes time to build up the nutrients and you, it takes a lot of mass of material to build that nutrients up as well. So what we have done here, we were going to plant fall turnips and, rat and rutabagas here, but because of the problems that we saw with the potatoes, I didn't feel confident enough to put that seed, work the soil, put that seed in, and then be disappointed in 60 to 90 days when we try to harvest those rutabagas and turnips and we didn't have anything because of the, the poorness of the soil. So we've done a couple of things and we'll continue to do this. Dry grass clippings uh, as we mow the grass, the chemical free and seed free grass clippings, even when they're wet we just throw them on this bed, distribute them across. We've got some shredded paper from the office as well as coffee grounds and coffee filters. Now this will continue, we'll just continue to layer that material on until the end of the growing season and then at the end of the growing season we will make intensive efforts to double the amount of leaves that we put on this bed. Each one of these grow beds, raised berms essentially is what we call them, we put leaves on in the fall. We pull them from the street, from our property, anywhere we can get a hold of them and normally we put about 18 inches of leaves and by mid-summer the following year they've just dissipated, they've worked themselves in the soil and broke down. So with this bed, we will double our efforts and try to go about three foot high with the leaves to add more nutrients with that. And then in the spring we'll come in and work the soil with fertilizer and compost and more coffee grounds in an effort to revitalize this soil so we can grow something successful. Just this bed, everything else seems to be okay. So isolate, find out what's going wrong with your particular grow area, your garden, if it's one area or a large area, and figure out how you can work with the soil and utilize it so it's ready for next year. We could come in here and work this bed and add a bunch of stuff, but we're just going to continue to layer it, let it sit empty until next spring as we continue to add free renewable resources and it's good for our soil to help build our soil. Thanks for watching. Join me again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.